Now, I didn't make a big deal about this recently, but I just turned 40 years old. And this is kind of a big deal for me because I've been thinking of myself as a decent runner for most of my life. And now that I'm definitely getting older, where my age is such a strong signifier of where I'm at in my life, I'm thinking a little bit differently than how I did about running when I was 18 years old, 20 years old, and even 25 or 30. I'm paying attention to things that I didn't usually pay attention to because my eye is toward longevity in the sport. Now, one of those things that I'm thinking about is my running form, my economy, how efficient I am. I basically just want to be efficient so that I don't get injured. Now that I'm 40 years old, I recognize that my ability to recover is hampered by my age, by my dwindling testosterone levels. I'm not 22 anymore. And so my ability to recover is, is very much tied to how much damage I am incurring when I'm out there on a run. And I'm someone who, Yes, I'm doing long runs, I'm doing workouts, I'm running strides, I'm strength training, I'm doing all the things that good training is comprised of, but I wanna make sure that I can rebound from those things. And so one of the things that I'm looking at is my symmetry, how asymmetrical I am from my left side to my right side. And this is really important because we now have the technology to accurately measure how much time we spend on our left foot versus our right foot because running after all is just a series of very coordinated one-legged hops from one leg to the other. And if you're spending more time substantially on one leg than the other, that's gonna put a lot more load and stress on that leg and your injury risk is going to go up. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit more about how we can measure left-right balance, why this is important to keeping you healthy and if your asymmetry is a little beyond the normal range, the normal window, what you can do to get a little bit more symmetrical and even out some of those imbalances. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been using the Koros Pod 2 to get accurate left-right balance on my form so that I know exactly how much time I'm spending on my left side versus my right side. And so it's been really interesting looking at the data because this is a really interesting piece of technology. First, it just does so many things. You can actually wear it two different ways for two different purposes. If you put it on your shoe, you're gonna get better GPS data. So if you live in a city, if you often have dead spots where your GPS isn't really working as well, this pod is gonna work with your watch to get better satellite connectivity. And if you run on a treadmill, it's gonna give you better pacing data and distance data so that you're just not relying on your watch to accurately reflect how much distance you've covered on the treadmill. A lot of people don't like to use the treadmill for the data because those machines can be a little bit off. And if you wanna upload it to Strava, you've gotta be able to have accurate data on your watch. Now, I'm not actually using it like that. What I'm doing is putting it on the back of my waistband. So this is a really cool way of getting better running form data because it hooks into this little silicone pod. And so it's kind of squishy, it's soft. You don't even really notice it on the back of your shorts or your tights. And this little thing pops right in. Now I discovered some pretty good news using the Koros Pod 2. I'm relatively symmetrical and that's good news for me as I get older because I'm not gonna have to do extra work to battle some imbalances or, or extra weaknesses I have due to an imbalance. But if you are worried about your own imbalances, it can be really helpful to use a piece of technology like this to figure out if you have a substantial left-right imbalance. Now, if you're looking at the data and you see, some, see something like you're spending 51.8% of your time on your left foot or, and uh, let's see, let's do the math. 48.2% of that time on your other foot. What this means is that you have a left-right imbalance of 2% or less. And that's really the place where we wanna be. Research has shown that if your asymmetry is 2% or less, you're probably okay. And there was actually a really interesting study published in the New York Times a couple years back, looking at the asymmetry of the fastest man ever to live, Usain Bolt. And you know what? Usain Bolt is not symmetrical. Usain Bolt, like everyone, has asymmetries and spends more time on one of his feet than his other foot. But because that asymmetry isn't substantial, he's not obviously uh, ruining his performances or putting himself at an undue risk of injury. That's where we wanna be too. So let's make sure that our asymmetry is 
52 to 48 or less. And obviously, it should be as little as possible. We want to be as symmetrical as possible. Now, one of the cool things I found uh, while working with the Pod 2 is that I realized it was there. And so I was cognizant of my asymmetries. I was trying to be as symmetrical as possible. And I think this is a really important nuance to consider about using technology that is supposed to have somewhat of a corrective effect on your running form. Because if you're wearing something that's gonna tell you what your left right balance is, you're probably more likely to focus on that balance and try to run more symmetrically. So I found it was a really nice forcing function to get me to run more symmetrically and think more symmetrically so that I can try to implement that in my running form. Now, if you find yourself more than 2% asymmetrical, there are some things that we can do to work on this imbalance. And I think the number one thing to do that trumps every other strategy is to focus on single leg exercises. Now, I'm gonna put a link under this video to the MACE single leg strength routine. And this is, as the name implies, a single leg strength routine. And the entire goal of a routine like this is to work on your imbalances. Because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, because running is just a series of single leg hops from one leg to the other, we need to be competent on each one of our legs individually. And so this is where things like single leg exercises can be really important at making sure that you're not developing asymmetries and imbalances over time because of the natural way that you run. So if you're not already incorporating single leg exercises into your program, let's use a routine like the MACE single leg routine. Uh, there's a lot of exercises also in the ITB rehab routine, which is another one of our routines used by a lot of other runners. Uh, things that are going to help work on those imbalances like single leg exercises. Now, just using the pod two gave me the awareness of how much time I'm spending on each individual leg. And I think just being aware of it, especially if you have a three or maybe 4% asymmetry, that is gonna be really helpful too. Another helpful strategy for eliminating your imbalances is to, is to incorporate a variety of form drills into your program. So I think working on drills and single leg exercises are essentially accomplishing the same goal, forcing you to perform movements and exercises with only one of your legs, because running is just a really a single leg movement executed in rapid succession from one leg to the other. And so we've got to get good at just one leg. And this really speaks to the idea that runners need to be athletes. We need to have athleticism and strength and balance and coordination and all these things. Because if we don't, we're going to find out that our right leg, left, right, left leg imbalance, that's a tough phrase to say, is too, too much. It's too substantial. And we're going to really put ourselves at too high of an injury risk. Now, the other really interesting thing about the data I got from the pod too is that you'll see from a couple different workouts that I ran, I did one uh, series of hill sprints, not, not, I would call them uphill strides. Let's call them uphill strides. One series of uphill strides where I was doing 15 seconds, maybe 98% max speed uh, hill strides. And then I did a 10 minute threshold run about lactate threshold effort. And the interesting thing about looking at my left right asymmetry doing both kinds of workouts is that it does seem I'm more asymmetrical when I'm running fast. And so this is a valuable data point to have because now I know running fast is even more of an injury risk to me personally because when I run fast, my form isn't as good as when I'm running slower. So this is a really good insight for me to have because now I can actually map this onto my training to give myself better training and to reduce my own personal injury risk. So now I know I'm gonna be much more cautious about adding intensity to my running program because I know that there's just an extra risk there. So it's something I have to keep in mind as I'm building intensity. And so as you look at your own data, if you, as you figure out what kind of left, right leg imbalance you have, if any, and really where that imbalance might concentrate. For me, it's when I run fast. My imbalances are more concentrated when I run fast, so I just have to be more careful. And you can use this data to 
help yourself, prevent your next injury, and also just get stronger and become a better athlete, which is ultimately gonna help you become a faster runner. Quick shout out to Koros for sponsoring this video. I partnered with them to highlight some of the training metrics that their products can really isolate and highlight for you so that you can design better training and help yourself hopefully prevent that next big injury. So big thanks to Koros. Uh, now I've been wearing Koros products for years ever before this partnership. So I would be talking about Koros and, and wearing my Koros products even without this partnership. But either way, thank you Koros for doing what you do and supporting runners. Uh, now, if you want a free watch band, if you go on koros.com and you buy any watch that they have, uh, use code STRENGTHRUNNING and you'll be able to get a free watch band. So hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you as you think about some of those metrics that you might not care as much about when you're 22, but as you get older, uh, as your injury risk increases just because of age, we also need to be looking at some of these metrics to help us stay healthy, especially as we get older. So thank you for watching. Thank you, Koros. And if you got value from this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button and I'll keep making more of them.